All right, hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about the splanchnic cranium of the shark. So, um, just so we're orienting ourselves here, uh, we're looking at the ventral uh, surface of the chondrocranium, which you can see right here, and then the splanchnic cranium is this, which includes the jaws and all of the gill arches, as well as uh, one arch we'll talk about in a second. So, uh, one way we refer to all of these arches uh, that form both the jaws, the hyoid arch, and the gills, are the visceral arches. That's all of them collectively. There are seven total, but we have special names for the first two visceral arches. So we have the mandibular arch, which includes Meckel's cartilage here and the palatal quadrate, and then the um, hyoid arch, which has a couple parts to it that we'll get to in a second once we start talking about these ones. So the last five are called branchial arches. Branchial, B-R-A-N-C-H-I-A-L. Um, means gill. So we talked a little bit about um, the uh, palatal quadrate, Meckel's cartilage. Um, from this view there's not too much else we want to look at on those. There's one other thing we'll talk about on a different specimen because this one's actually missing um, that feature. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. So if we look at the hyoid arch that's underneath supporting Meckel's cartilage right here, there is a kind of smaller um, section in the middle called the basi hyle, uh, and then out to the sides we have the serrato hyles that go laterally from the basi hyle. There's one basi hyle and there are two serrato hyles. And then if we look at the branchial arches, there are five basic parts of a branchial arch. Not all of the branchial arches have five, each of these five parts, but it's a good um, way to kind of remember uh, the order and what is, uh, what is present. So, I uh, highly recommend making a mnemonic device. There is some examples in your lab manual um, of uh, how you can make a mnemonic device of this. So, I think it's important to remember it goes B, H, C, E, P for the first three branchial arches, and then B, C, E, P for the last two. And we'll get, and let's talk about what each of those letters refers to now. So, the B in our uh, branchial arch um, series means, it refers to the basi branchial um, cartilages. So the basi branchial cartilages are unpaired cartilages that lie along the midline of this shark. So there's one here, uh, and then there's one kind of big one, and it looks like a separate one right here. So those are basi branchial cartilages. Now lateral to the basi branchial cartilage, for the first three branchial arches, you have the hypo, uh, sorry, excuse me, hypo branchial cartilages. So there's that one, that one, and that one, and it's mirrored on the other side. Going lateral to that, uh, for the first three branchial arches, and then uh, for the first, well, from the basal from the basi branchial cartilage on the last two, we have the serrato branchial. Cartilages. Now, serrato or carato uh, refers means horn, so it's kind of a horn shape. It's a very long segment of cartilage um, on the branchial arches, and you'll often hear um, serrato, like we heard serrato on the um, hyle, with the serrato hyle oh, right here. It's like horn shape. It's a long, long shape. Okay, and now there are two more parts that we have to go over. Uh, I'm going to turn it here so we can see them a little bit better. All right, so from this angle, we can see uh, a couple more segments of the branchial arches that we can't really see from the ventral view. Um, so just to reiterate, the serrato branchial arch wraps around. It's the very long horn-like um, segment of cartilage. And then as we reach about the midpoint of the lateral side, uh, we get another segment of cartilage called the epibranchial cartilage. So epi just means above. Uh, and then wrapping back around the next segment of cartilage, the last segment of cartilage, is the pharyngobranchial cartilage, or pharyngobranchial. So remember it's B-H-C-E-P, branchial, uh, sorry, excuse me, basibranchial, hypobranchial, serratobranchial, epibranchial, and pharyngobranchial. All right, and let's turn this now so we can see more of the lateral view of the splanchnocranium. Coming off of the palatal quadrate into the orbit, 
we've got this long projection. Now that is called the orbital process. Now if you remember from the contracranium video, there's the Bayesi trabecular process. So that is actually pulled on by the orbital process. It kind of keeps the um, jaws from coming off the head too much uh, while they're um, extending them and biting. Okay, and then we've got this kind of um, projection right here. This is the adductor process. So then uh, one last thing we'll kind of mention here is the um, gill rays and gill rakers. Uh, you often will not see them on most of these specimens um, because they are usually torn off during the dissection process because they're kind of delicate structures. But the gill rakers lie essentially on the uh, uh, the arches, the gill arches, and then the gill rays look like little feathery projections coming off. Um, so that's the kind of the difference there. And uh, on the last shark specimen, we couldn't quite see um, a couple structures. So this right here, sorry, that's my left hand. Uh, those are the labial cartilages um, on either side of the, they're kind of like in the corners of the shark's mouth, so to speak. Um, and then as long as we're here, there's something we missed on the chondrocranium video. So these are the nasal capsules. And within the nasal capsule, um, you can kind of see one right here, right about there. That is one of the nares. Um, just so you can see that in an actual specimen. All right. So thanks everyone for listening to the um, shark splanchnocranium video. Take care.